Today I'm going to give you a walk around of my Folgatec FT5 and all the changes that I've made to it, which uh, it was an R1 to start with, but gee, I don't think it is anymore. Okay, we're back. As I said, I have had a Folgatec FT5 R1 now for, oh, I don't know, when did they come out? Two, three years? Four years ago, maybe. Well, I had one of the first ones. And it's been my go-to printer for some time. Now, I'm fortunate enough that I have enough printers now that I, I run the FT5 for PLA and PETG only. I used to run it for ABS with an enclosure, but I don't need to do that anymore. So that's my mostly PETG printer. Anyway, let's get on with the FT5. Now, a lot of this is going to be handheld, and I do apologize for the lighting, but it's the best I can do in my office. So I'm just going to take the camera off the tripod and give you a guided tour of the Folgatec FT5. As I said, I do apologise for the lighting because I'm not in the studio. We have the studio at Anthony's house and uh, this is at my house and this printer is way too big for me to be transporting down to the studio. So it's printing at the moment. It's actually printing in PLA at the moment, Aurora and PLA. And you will see straight away, hopefully, that this printer has been fitted with the R2 conversion kit which is available from Folgatec and you can see it there. Now the reason that this kit was brought out was a lot of people in humid areas were finding that the melamine that the original frame was made out of suffered uh, with the humidity and swelled and warped and did funny things. I'm not in that position here, we're not in a humid area, but I thought, what the hell, we'll put the conversion kit on anyway. Now you'll see, I think you can see there, the frame now is a composite material, which is two sheets of aluminium or aluminium with a composite material sandwiched in between there. And that takes away all the problems that you may have had with the humidity of the melamine. Now, to fit this R2 conversion, it's basically a total strip and rebuild. And that's one of the other reasons I did it, was it was an ideal opportunity. Because this printer has been a workhorse for some time, it was a great opportunity to pull it all apart, strip it down, clean it, re-oil everything, realign everything, and put it all back together again. Now, the whole process took me a couple of days, but it was well and truly worth it. Now you'll see at the front here, I've also fitted the front bar removal brackets, which are available on Thingiverse. And this takes that front piece that used to go across here, takes that away so you get much better access to your print. Now I've also fitted a silicon heated bed to this machine. Now the conversion kit to R2 does not convert it from 12 volt to 24 volt. It uh, is purely mechanical. So this is still a 12 volt machine. And as you know, the heated bed on the 12 volt machine was fairly ordinary. So even though you'll see that the red part there is the original heated bed, it's not connected. On top of that is a piece of insulation material and on top of that is the silicon heat pad, then the glass, and then it's a sheet of print in Z print film. There'll be a link in the description for this stuff. It's not cheap, but it's, in my opinion anyway, better than BuildTac or anything else that I've used. Everything sticks to it beautifully. So. That's the start of the process, the brackets and the removal there. You'll see that I have a different extruder on there. Now don't go looking for one of these extruders because unfortunately 
they're no longer made. This is a BPS V4 extruder made by Bill's Prototype Studio here in Australia, but he doesn't make them anymore, so you can't get one. But because of the design of the FT5, which is basically a stepper motor bolted to an upright, you can pretty much run any extruder on there that you want, really. So that's the one I use, and you'll see at the back, I have a rear mounted print fan, which ducts down to the print under there and that's why that kept on tapes on there because it was a bit close so I didn't want it to melt. All right next and this was the major part of the upgrade to the R2. It converts the z-axis from two motors and two lead screws to a single motor through some guide pulleys to the two lead screws. Now I didn't think that this would make that much difference but by hell it does. Oh, by the way, that's a MOSFET that I use to run the silicon bed heater. It just takes a bit of the strain off the board and it's held in place by a very high tech medium called Bluetack. So this is the single motor dual lead screw system. And since I've put this on, I leveled the bed once and once only. I've never had to touch it again. The horizontal does not go out of whack like it used to do with the two motors. It sits there beautifully and is perfect every time. I can now start a print on this and walk away, not that I do, and know that it's going to be perfect. Now, I've also fitted an adjustable Z height limit switch again available on Thingiverse which I had to modify somewhat for, because of the extruder. So that works very well, it's actually attached to the upright rod underneath there. So that's very good but I don't need it anymore because I don't have to adjust anything anymore. So that's basically it as far as modifications. I haven't done that much. I did take off the rear cable chain because I didn't like the cable chain on the back too much so I replaced that. Everything else on it is pretty much stock standard. As I said it's the original 12 volt system which is fine as far as I'm concerned but it is a big job as I said to fit this R2 conversion kit. Now if you wanted to change it from 12 to 24 volts you could, I guess, but I really don't see the point. You're better off just buying an R2 because you've got to basically rewire the whole thing if you do that. You might be able to see at the back there where the wires come through that hole there. That top piece is still the original Malamine because there was no way known I was going to completely remove the wiring just so that I could get it through that hole. So I left the original piece. It was fully compatible. All right, that's about it. That's the Folgatec FT5 R1 slash R2 slash my little modifications. And it prints awesomely well. So you see that there, but yeah, I'll show you that model at the end, but it's actually printing value. Well, if anything, it's a little bit quieter than it used to be too. Now, I already had fitted, but I'll just show you if I can. A white piece under the, between the motor and the frame. That's a, one of those soft sound deadening type mounts for the motors. That seems to make a difference too. All right, there's links below for the Folgatec FT5 and the Folgatec FT5 R2 try them out. Uh, I think they're a great printer. It's an American company which means you have full access to the company and their after sales support is absolutely brilliant. They have a, a great system where you just drop them an email with a problem and they'll get back to you pretty much straight away. John Folger is a really good guy at doing that. All right that's about all I can tell you about this upgrade. So yeah. The hot end f***ing rocks. Please make sure you subscribe.
use their coupon code and grab one of my shit hot folger to 5 printer.